Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So last week I did a video on why you should study at the University of Manchester, highlighting the good parts about the course and the university itself. So I thought it would be suitable to do an opposite video highlighting the not so good parts about the university and the course. The point I'm about to mention below is a mixture of opinions based on mine, my friends, and a collection of internet opinions, maybe from alumni or graduates, but obviously whether something is good or bad is very subjective and it depends on you, so don't forget to do like a complete research on the good parts about the university as well before completely ruling University of Manchester out. So without further ado, here are the points. First, is the cost. If you are a homeland student, as in you are a student from the UK, then your tuition fee for the 2022 to 2023 academic year tuition is still £9,250. But if you are an international student, then based on the subject you study, the tuition fee at the University of Manchester ranges from 20k to 48k. So for studying architecture at the University of Manchester, it is 25k for the year 2022 to 2023 and they are increasing in price, probably because of inflation or the university wants to make more profit and sometimes 25k can be quite a big burden, financial burden for some people. Architecture courses generally cost more for students and also you have extra expenses because you need to print, uh, you need to make models and all the modeling materials cost a lot of money and you also have to factor in like the expenses when you're living in Manchester because it's like a bigger city so all the expenses is going to be more costly than other rural places. Number two is about financial aid or financial help ranging from bursaries to scholarships. So both universities offer scholarships for students who excel in the courses or for international students but both universities scholarship application terms and conditions excludes architecture students, which is kind of baffling because they often advertise this course as like a joint program, which means you can use resources from both unis, but they're excluding architecture students from both sides. And as I mentioned above, usually when you study architecture, you have more expenses because you need to print, you need to buy materials for modeling. And I'm sure this extra financial help would be helpful for many students. Number three, about the joint course. So a lot of people online have this complaint about that the school is actually advertised as joint program, which means it's from University of Manchester and Manchester Metropolitan University. But when you're actually studying the course, 90% of the course is run by Manchester Metropolitan University. And a lot of people feel that when they pay that tuition fee, they're paying for a Russell Group Uni rank university for their education, but instead they getting the course run by Manchester Metropolitan University, which is not a Russell Group University. And yes, I do agree that you can get resources from both sides because it's a joint course, but I think it's more on the extracurricular side, as in you can enjoy like the societies and clubs from both unis more than academic resources. Number four is the large number of students. So I think each year the number of students ranges from probably 120 to 160 and potentially more and a lot of people think that the university is including a lot of international students in this large number of um, students because they want to drive up the profit for a university because international students pay so much more as mentioned earlier and a lot of people think that the university is putting more thought into profiting from education as a business model than the quality of the education of the students. And a lot of students think that this large number of students means there's less time and resources for each student. You can email the tutors or lecturers and ask them if you have questions, but if you're talking about official time with a tutor, it's more about like 10 to 30 minutes each week with your tutor, which some people think is way too little because one to two tutor oversee like 20 students because there's so many students in just one year. Number five is studio space and studio culture. So I know a lot of students enter university and architecture school with the desire to participate in the famous architectural studio culture and have their own personalized or assigned desk space but there's no such thing at the University of Manchester. So there are like desks and chairs. It's more like a library and it's more like a first come first serve basis. You don't have like a personally assigned seat. And as for studio culture, you can go to a studio and work with your friends, but it's more like a self-led thing rather than like a 
studio, you know, uni culture thing, which is quite disappointing to many people as I've read online. While students not being in studio and working could you know, range from a, a variety of reasons, but something that is is because students don't have their assigned space, which encourage them to work together in that space. Star number six is tutors. So I won't deny that there are actually some really good tutors at MSA, but there are also some that are probably less helpful or less inspiring, and you do get to choose your own atelier and you know, thus tutors in your third year, but when you're in your first and second year, what tutor you get is entirely up to luck because you're randomly placed in different studio groups and you're assigned that tutor. And sometimes I think like when you're unlucky, you get assigned like a bad tutor for two years. And even if you get to choose a good tutor in your third year, I think what you get out of that course is very limited because I think you absorb the most and you learn the most when you're in your first and second year when you're new to this industry or new to this subject and a good tutor could really guide you on a better path and inspire you and teach you how to design whereas if you have a bad tutor you're pretty much on your own and you will feel lost for most of the time and this is a legitimate concern of many about the qualifications of tutors and whether they're good or bad Research is a very important task when choosing a university and a tip I would give you is to look on forum or discussion platforms like Reddit or the student room to see the feedback of current students at the university rather than just looking at the uh, feedback from the official university's website. That way you can have a more holistic view of the school, whether it's right for you or not, and make an informed decision. Just to remind you again, what is good or bad is really subjective and the points listed above are just some observations and very personal opinions that might not matter to you a lot. So do your own research and don't forget to look at the good sides as well, because like any other university, there will be good reviews and there will be bad reviews and it is up to you to decide what is good for you and what's bad for you. So I hope this was useful in some way and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!